All right, so Miami and uh, the Cowboys, they go head-to-head this Sunday, Christmas Eve. Uh, Dallas doesn't yep. have a statement win outside of going 1-1 uh, one and one with Philly. And Miami hasn't, beating, hasn't beaten a winning team. I think we got a tweet for those watching yep. on YouTube from you. Uh, but which, oh, okay. which, one of these, which one of these teams would prove to be a Super Bowl threat with a statement win? I don't know. I can't read it. Oh, oh, that's fine. So the tweets from NFL on CBS. Cowboys-Dolphins will be the first game in NFL history between teams with 20 combined wins, but one or fewer against teams above 500. Cowboys 1-3 and three against teams above 500. Dolphins 0-3 oh against teams above 500. So before I answer the question, something on the above 500 stuff. It is noteworthy. It's slightly misleading. So here's the question I would ask the audience. Will you think the Cowboys are a far better team than you think they are right now if the Rams beat the Saints tonight? The Rams beating the Saints should have no impact on what you think of the Cowboys, right? And Let's go ahead and say also, if Seattle beats the Titans this weekend, will you think the Cowboys are a far better team than you think they are right now? Probably not. But if those two things happen, all of a sudden the Cowboys have three wins against teams above 500. So the the, the reason the Rams and the Seahawks aren't above 500 is because the Cowboys beat them. They're both 7-7. Seven and seven. And so I understand the, oh, you beat up on bottom feeders critique, but two of the Cowboys' wins came against teams that I think are going to be playoff teams potentially, certainly the Rams and possibly the Seahawks, and right now those don't count as above 500 wins, but they might by the end of the year. Now, to the question about uh, uh, about who proves to be a Super Bowl threat with a statement win this week, I think it's Dallas. I think Dallas has all the makings of a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Now, maybe it won't matter because the Niners are just too good for everybody. That seems to be what Vegas thinks. That's certainly what the media thinks. Every NFL conversation seems to be polluted by the fact that the vast majority of the media seems to think the whole league is, as you would say, DeMond's a mid or worse, except for the Niners the Niners? And- and maybe the Ravens. It's like the Niners are great, the Ravens are potentially really good, and everyone else stinks. Because when we talk about the Chiefs, the Cowboys, the Dolphins, who are, in my opinion, third, fourth, fifth in most people's power rankings, we only talk about what they're not good at. So if we're only picking apart top, you know, teams that are consensus top five, the other, you know what, let me change it. I think the media actually thinks there's three good teams. One great team, the Niners, and then two good teams, the Ravens and the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills get get more credit for their season than teams that have been consistently good all year get for theirs, but that, you know, that is what it is. Now, the Dolphins, I thought, had a really impressive win this past week. I understand it was against the Jets, but the way they did it and doing it without Tyreek. I'm also impressed by the media at large's ability to accurately and I think fairly watch Tua Tungavailoa say he's good but probably not great, recognize the system. And how they system. don't do it for Brock Party. Is that where you're about to get exactly to? Exactly right. Exactly right. It's amazing to me that we can have, and by the way, Tua this week did something Purdy has not been able to do, which is play a game without one of his Avengers and play great. We're yet to see that from Brock this year, but for some reason, I've got to deal with Brock Purdy being an overwhelming favorite to win league MVP, and Tua, whose numbers aren't as good, but they're in the same ballpark, has just been totally dismissed as a candidate, as he should be, by the way, because people are like, oh, it's Tyreek. We see Tua do it without Tyreek. Nobody cares. It's a weird thing going on. With all that said, I think Dallas wins. Miami's in with a bunch of injuries. None of their their entire offensive line missed practice yesterday. That seems like a problem. We don't know if two is going to play. And I think Miami is a good, not great team. I think Dallas can be a great team. And dating back to December of 21, Dallas is 9-0 and with an average margin of victory of nearly 20 points coming off a loss. So I like Dallas in this spot. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.